Tekken 7. This thing's been in Japanese arcades since 1989. Yep. Uh, first, it, is, it was the first video game ever created. <laughs> We've seen it at so many trade shows. Yeah. How is it? It's pretty good. Uh, so the it came out on in arcades in 2015. And so uh, we actually have an interview up with Harada about why it took so long. And, and basically his process was... From what I what I took away from it was that it was sort of like a beta period, but it was a sort of a polished beta because he mentioned that, okay, we want to have sort of very stable connections, but we want to improve on the game over the course of several years. But we want to have uh, an experience that's good enough because if you're going to give someone a dollar to play a game that isn't out yet or whatever, you want to have a good time. But Do, do um, you believe that? Do you think financially or from the business side of things, it makes sense for Namco to release an arcade so early? I wonder how much of it is just like a fondness for that model of we want to have our game in arcades because a lot of games, even you know, Street Fighter V isn't necessarily, wasn't an arcade first release. A lot of other fighting games aren't arcade first. But uh, it, it the final product is weird because I enjoy it and, it and you can sort of tell what they improved. They improved a lot of balance. They improved... There's a lot sort of, of of models and content in this game that I think is it works to its favor, but there are other parts of it where it, it feels like at some point they decided, oh, right, we have to release this in consoles, so here's a couple features that are exclusive to the, to the PS4 version or and consoles as well. I heard there's a sweet first-person mode. There's uh, a... There's a... Uh, there's a there's two VR modes. There's a, uh, you can view. So one of the things that Tekken has had for a while is all these crazy collectibles where you can dress. So for example, my King is dressed up in a beret. He's got sunglasses, even though he is, you know, King is, wears a, a lucha mask that it makes him look like a, a cheetah. Uh, but he's also wearing a giant. Hang on. That's on just a back. mask. He's not actually a cheetah. I thought he was no, he's not, a cheetah. no, he's not. He's actually, I always thought he was not a no truth in this art. <laughs> Are you kidding me? He's a wrestler. But wait, but the bear is really a bear and the raptor is really a yes, raptor? The bear, Couldn't they obvious. just make him a well, cheetah head? What about head? the kangaroo? Yeah, is the kangaroo real? The kangaroo's are real. Okay, <laughs> thank God the kangaroo's Cheetahs real. can't fight, but bears obviously can. Everyone knows this. This is a mess. Uh, uh, but anyway. Is Hachi's hair real? It's ve- it's the realest. Okay. <laughs> and it's uh, spectacular. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you can, you, can, you can equip all these kinds of stuff. Like He's wearing a, a giant pizza on his back. <laughs> uh, there's uh, one, of the, one of the hats is you can have a... a, a like a Finding Nemo fish. I don't remember what it's called. A clownfish, I think Clown it is. Clownfish, yeah. It's yeah. just floating around. There's no water. It's just, So it's just like in the air. This sounds like the loot system from Injustice 2, but wacky and more fun. <laughs> it, it is wacky, all cosmetic, so none of it affects your actual fighting. Okay. One of, one of the things I found really weird is that you can just have the character holding a knife, <laughs> but, but it won't do anything. So it, like <laughs> during all I'm their punches about. and kicks, they'll just have a knife. So my uh, Tekken character can just be a Velociraptor holding a knife that he doesn't use? <laughs> well, not a Velociraptor, but you can you can ha- you can can wear a f- like something that would make you look like a deer, for example. Or With a pizza <laughs> cape and a yeah, knife. Yeah. Exactly. I- I'm into this. It's incredibly silly and I'm it's very fun. I'm buying this game fun. immediately. This sounds good. Um, but so the, the two things that I sort of took away from it was, you know, the fighting is fine. It's, it's very, it's more intricate than most fighters, obviously, because it's 3D and you're if you want to move around in the space you have to do a lot of dashing back and forth basically in order to to figure out okay here's the ranges of my moves i want to be able to not just mash or whatever um and so that part's a little tricky to learn the thing is is that the two the tutorial in this game is very short it just tells you here are two punches two kicks uh here's a, a new rage art which is sort of a super meter that you can do when your health is low um but beyond that it's just here's the here's the simple combos that you can do but it, it just doesn't really say like here's what here's why wall bounce why you want to do wall bounces yeah. here's why sort of some attacks connect during these stages and how high and lows interact so it doesn't really teach you any of that which is a little unfortunate um, the other thing is that the story isn't as you know fun as it could have been really uh, so yeah I mean a Tekken endings are a thing right yeah that pe- people love to sort of. Uh, watch those endings just because they are so silly and some of that is in here um the Can thing you give is us the silliest one uh so there's a new character called lucky chloe lucky uh, chloe lucky mm-hmm. chloe she's Let me like guess. A, she's hot she's uh, she's hot no obviously. way <laughs> she's wearing a skirt and she has a uh, she wears like headphones that have cat ears and she has she wears these huge right. cat paws but she no but she she flies you know she can kick ass uh no but her It'd be weird if she didn't the things they the things they do is they have two story modes basically they have a story mode that is sort of like a injustice style but much shorter sort of singular narrative where you play different characters and then they have several character stories which basically replace the arcade endings from from the last games okay uh and so chloe's ending is that uh eddie gordo 
uh, comes in looking for, I think it's Jin or Kazuya. They're always looking for a Mishima, right? One sure. of those three characters. And so they're looking, uh, Eddie Gordo's looking for one of the Mishimas. Uh, Lucky Chloe finds him. And at some point they just fight for, uh, and the, the stipulation is that if Chloe wins, that Eddie Gordo becomes uh, her backup dancer. And so if Chloe wins that fight, because you can do it from both sides, obviously, then they have a short routine where Chloe's trying to teach him how to a specific dance move. And she's she's very stern with him. About that's good. It. Yeah. yeah right, that's that good stuff. Fun. Yeah. But a lot of them, the thing is, is that uh, all of them are a text intro where they show a picture of the character. It's like, oh, you know, this person's looking for this for, you know, killed his mother or whatever. Uh, and then you do one fight or two rounds. Dancer. <laughs> and then a cutscene, and that's it. Like they're very Rough. truncated. Okay. Um, which you know, some of them that's all you need. You know, you get a quick joke and then you're fine. But some of them feel like they're supposed to be part of a much larger story, so you don't really get that resolution. So do you feel like even after so much time in the oven, it's still lacking features and depth? Yeah, the the story mode feels sort of the, where I think they cut the most corners because it's it is super fast. Yeah. Uh, they they it feels like they edit it it down to like about half and then they did it again there's just there's just scenes where uh like i said in my review there's a scene where someone is beaten up super severely to the point where the character who beats them up says okay this person is dead i'm going to walk away now next scene it is that person walking down a hallway saying okay here's what we need to do to kick his ass uh so they they just have it has a very poor understanding of pacing and it's it's it it goes by in about two and a half hours three hours uh which isn't terrible but um it's funny because the, the the best part of that story mode ends up being Akuma, who is who is yeah. a big part of the story yeah. mode. Uh, I don't want to spoil sort of his involvement. Some of the trailers have, have mentioned it, but he he steals the show in a way that I think is really cool. Uh, I like that they, they they didn't just say, oh, he's a guest character, so he's not canon or whatever. Right. They just go ahead and say, yeah, no, Akuma's a real big part of the Tekken universe now. So he's a Street Fighter character. Yeah. Do they acknowledge that? Like, oh, he comes from a different world? No, they just, they, well, the way they introduce him is just he's... He, there's been a disturbance in the Far East. Uh, we, who knows what he is? And Akuma's like, I'm, I'm, I'm a demon. Uh, and, <laughs> wait, wait. And, I'm a demon. And, and, and I mean, I don't want to spoil because they, they do actually have um, some big revelations about the plot line. So basically the, the overarching plot is uh, Heihachi and Kazuya throwing each other off cliffs for, for years, basically. Uh, the big revelation here is they tell you why that, why that has been happening forever. Uh, but you know, I'm not gonna. I don't want to spoil it. But there is no answer to that question that could conceivably be interesting, right? It's okay. It's, <laughs> He's it's lucky not Chloe's a, father. It is something where you're like, all right, that makes sense. <laughs> that makes it's sense for why they're throwing each other yeah, off cliffs. It, it's not the answer I, I would have wanted, or you know, was expecting, or even cared about. But it's fine. I, I'm when I when I saw all the answer, right. I was like, fine, sure. Okay, so you also reviewed Ultra Street Fighter Two. Yeah. Right, yeah. uh, which seemed to be pretty bare bones, and yeah. some of the worst UI I've seen in the game in the last yeah, five it's, years. Yeah, it's just abysmal, a bare, abysmal bare, bare UI. bones. <laughs> oh boy, rough skeleton patch. All right, so let's let's stack up all these fighters recently. Like, yeah, there's been a lot. Who is the audience that should go for Tekken Seven over Injustice Two or even Ultra Street Fighter Two? That's rough. Um, I think you know, I think Tekken fans are gonna are they're going to like this game. The online yeah. connectivity works really well. There's multiple matches um one of the things i do like is that it incentivizes you to keep playing ranked uh because you never level down you oh you're always moving forward so you can lose a match against someone who's much stronger and gain a rank but if you win someone so you can get matched up with someone who's much higher ranked than you but you basically it's a it's a win-win for you so if you win you can go up several ranks so the my my first victory because you know people who play uh tekken games before they're out they're pretty good at them usually uh and so i was just getting my ass kicked constantly but my first victory was against someone who was ranked ninth in the world at the time and they beat they beat my ass the first time but the sure. thing you can do is say like immediate rematch and ranked cool uh so the second round i ended up somehow you know taking it and it was just all right i'm gonna i'm done for now I need to ride this high for a little while. And, and for the record, mm-hmm. I beat Serial in Street Fighter 2. So in a uh, way, if, if, I'm like the eighth by, greatest if, player if, in Tekken if, 7. I, if I beat, you mean win one round and then go undefeated <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, that's and then walk away? That is, yeah, sure. that is what he does. Yeah. Yeah. You figure that out. Okay, uh, so what? So matchmaking's good? Matchmaking's that's pretty good. That's the angle Tekken 7 has over Yeah, it's just, it, it is, the, the my conclusion was like, this is a pretty good version of Tekken that you can play on modern consoles. Uh, but it does have a bit of a rough learning. Like if you want to, if you go into any character and say, "I want to learn how to play this character," yeah, it's very hard to do so because you'll see you go to the move list, right? Which you know, uh, most Street Fighter, you know, Street Fighter games, you have three punches, three kicks, 
jumping, crouching, sure. This game, there are very specific moves that you can only do in certain situations. So there's, you know, uh, pretty much every permutation of the analog stick and every button is a, is a separate move. There are moves that you can only do when you're facing backwards from your opponent if you're hitting them from the front. There are attacks where if you crouch and then release crouch and then as you're rising, you press a button, it'll do a different move. So you have to be super precise and you have to figure out what moves you want to use. So it's th that's a really love, a tough learning curve and the game doesn't really help you out with that. Yeah. But you know, I played matches against people who weren't as good, and you know, the closer we got to release, and I'm, I, I you can have fun if you just want to like run around and, and try to hit each other on that level. But I, I would still go with Injustice if if you're looking for a fighting game to play and are new to them. I think Injustice does a pretty good job. Yeah. Um, if you want to learn how to actually play Tekken, I would actually say go back and play Tekken Tag Tournament too. Oh, you prefer that? Uh, yeah, because they have a thing called Fight Lab, which is maybe one of my favorite. Uh, learning like learning experiences in a fighting game because it's very silly um basically the way they teach you high uh high mid and low is they'll have robots jump into the screen and say i have a low target so basically hit me low and you hit them low and they'll fly off the screen it's very fun it's very silly but beyond tutorial you think tekken tag 2 is a better tech i game? think uh i it has certainly has more characters and i enjoy the tag i mean tekken tag tournament was my first my favorite one which is funny because they also have the ability to watch videos from those games and make those games your soundtrack so i'm rocking the oh, tekken tag tournament 2 I soundtrack, love that soundtrack. <laughs> uh, it's very good i like I, so that's what i've been rocking and yeah. so the so which is something that goes to show you know this is a, a great game for tekken fans but you know, if you're looking to get into if you're looking to get into Tekken specifically, I mean, yeah. go maybe go play Tekken Tag 2. But if you want to get into fighting games, I'd maybe go with another option. Thank you so much for watching this excerpt from the Game Former Show podcast. You can subscribe to the audio version and listen to new episodes airing every Thursday. We cover big games on the horizon, games that we've just reviewed. We have long form developer interviews, a lot of fun stuff. So check it out every Thursday.